you are six times more likely to die from a doctor's error than from a car crash. According to Johns Hopkins University, the third leading cause of death in the US is iatrogenics, meaning caused by the healer. Today, we will dive into the merits of procrastination when it comes to medicine. I went to the GP the House Arts in the Netherlands with killing burning sciatic nerve impingement. It was just brutal. And I got this, I think, while deadlifting like really heavy. And I went there and <laughs> all he could tell me it was it basically wasn't a hernia. I was really happy, but I still had sciatic syndrome. I didn't want to go to surgery. <laughs> that, that sounds not so good. You know, I'm young. I don't want to go to surgery. I want to stay healthy and I want to figure out myself how to get healthy. I looked around the internet and I found some stretches that stretches out some muscles that have been very tight for me for a while. And now not only is my sciatica gone, but I can also move a lot more freely. And if that doctor would have been very trigger happy to send me to the surgeon, if he, for example, was himself a surgeon and he would get paid for doing that surgery, then probably I would be limping around because I would be in a six month recovery period instead of just spending two months figuring out what I can do myself. So in that sense, procrastination can prevent iatrogenics. People go to the doctor for help. Ideally, they want to take a pill and just feel better immediately. This puts a lot of pressure on the doctors because they feel like they should treat. Is taking action always the way to go? Take this idea in a different context. When you look at the economic situation during the pandemic in 2020, a lot of people were having economical problems. So what did the US decide to do and other federal reserves? They just printed more money and the action made sense. The economy went up, everything seemed fine. Two to three years later, what we see is we have hyperinflation. Well, not necessarily hyperinflation, but it's 12%, which is insane. So the financial crisis is an example of how taking action can sometimes make the problem even worse. Taking action, therefore, can have consequences in the future that we cannot necessarily predict. These consequences can be very negative. Now, in medicine, this idea also applies. Think, for example, about back pain. Uh, in America, especially around 2016, a lot of people had back pain. And in Florida, they treated these people with a lot of opioids. And now look at America there's an opioid crisis going on. It's the leading cause of death of people aged 19 to 35 in the United States. And that is insane. This is mostly caused by medical doctors prescribing these opioids, which, you know, they had their incentives to do so. The medical establishment decided, okay, we can treat this pain with a pill. The same goes for surgery. Surgery has a lot of side effects. In some cases, for example, with joint pain, it might seem like a good idea, but an operation instead of like a first aid situation where someone is bleeding to death, like you need to operate. If you don't, they just die. But if it's not so clear that the risk is worth the benefit, you can also risk a lot of side effects. Well, look at Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman was the best bodybuilder, maybe after Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ronnie Coleman, he started to get back surgeries, his vertebrae got fused together because he couldn't keep his back straight, he had a lot of pain, he was on the pain pills as well. But now, with all these operations, he has no range of movement, he can barely move. And in some cases, where people get like sciatica, which is a nerve impingement, you can operate but after six years, compared to not operating, there's no difference in the efficacy. So people still either have the symptoms or it, you know, it just gets a little bit better. Uh, the funny thing is with nerves, after a few years, it releases some sort of acid which breaks down bone. That bone then creates a new crevice where the nerve can get through. So immediately doing surgery is not necessarily the best thing to do. And you know, you're creating a lot of damage while doing surgery. And the first principle of the Hippocratic Oath is primum non nocere, first do no harm. There's another problem that can cause overtreatment, which is the agency problem. This was described by Nassim Nicolas Taleb in Anti-Fragile, highly recommended. The incentives of, for example, the doctor are not necessarily in line with the incentive of the patient. Now, when you think about this in a context of heart disease, imagine a doctor sees a very, very high LDL, you know, low density lipoprotein cholesterol. That alarms him, even though he's like, okay, but the ratio of cholesterol of LDL to HDL cholesterol is pretty decent, but the guideline still says that I need to give him statins. What does a doctor do just to be safe himself? He just prescribes the statins even though some patients might not need it. We m might see this as something benign, but when looking at the side effect profile of these statin drugs, after like 20, 30 years of chronic use of this, which is, you know, statins are a chronic stressor, they stress your body, it can have very dire consequences. And one day you just might die of something else, of like liver disease. So there's an agency problem. The doctor is incentivized 
to prescribe more medication and the patient thinks he's being helped because you know there's an action being taken he gets medication he does the action and now he is more healthy that is not necessarily the case so in an ideal world what you would have is a doctor and a patient who both look at the problem of the patient's health and try to risk analyze what the best way forward is and i'm not saying that doctors should not take action you know in some cases it does work it's helpful i'm not saying that that would just be stupid what i'm saying is there needs to be some sort of structure set up that people have the room to make non-naive risk assessments when you give people medications the possible benefit is quite small but if the medication is not really fitted for this person or they get they get a lot of side effects the downside is basically infinite you could die from a really bad side effect and there needs to be some risk assessment when it comes to doctors about okay what is actually good practice is this risk really worth it or could we just get this patient to work out more and eat less sugar so he get he gets less inflamed doctors they should learn to judge these risks and right now in my medical school we don't really think about these things a lot you know we do get uh, talks about all right the the medicine should not be worse than the disease we hear that all, this all the time but it's easier said than done because when you're in the hospital you're basically just following guidelines and you don't want to stick your neck out too much it's dangerous because you don't want to get sued even though you still might just care about your patient's health you cannot just do what you think is the best thing so judgment can sometimes be hampered by by these guidelines and again i'm not saying that people should not get treated i'm just saying that there are risks to treatment and we should not be as blind to them as we are because the data doesn't lie like six times more people die from medical error than car crashes there should be more research done into this why do people die in the hospitals what is exactly causing iatrogenics and it could just be that doctors are very naive when it comes to judging the risk you know they don't take the risk they just say use this and the patient takes the risk and he is blind for this risk and if the patient dies by the action of the doctor it doesn't really matter for the doctor because he can't get sued he followed the guidelines he did what he had to do and the patient will only notice when it's too late because in the meanwhile he's going up to like the catastrophic event he feels like he's being helped by his medicine the merit of procrastination can be achieved by letting the body heal itself naturally so perhaps because we're so trigger happy on doing something perhaps we see a crisis and we want to avert the crisis by performing an action there are a lot of iatrogenics again this does not mean that doctors should not take action it just means that they should take less naive action Thank you for watching, click the like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. The album of the day today is King Crimson, In the Court of the Crimson King. This is one of the first albums actually I got for my record player coll uh, collection. I believe it's a Canadian press, which doesn't really matter, but the opener of this is amazing. Uh, Kanye West actually sampled this in, I believe, uh, Power, but you know, it's a 21st century schizoid map, and it just breaks out into this cacophony of amazing drums and this saxophone or trumpet i don't know just blazing it's it's amazing it really enters you into the world of the crimson king second one is called epitaph actually that's the third song and epitaph is a more melancholic song about how life is kind of confusing and you know life is confusing and then you die that's the song basically it's it's melancholic i love i love it but the closing track in the court of the crimson king i skipped a few tracks you could check it out yourself the closing track is just amazing the drums my god i fell in love with this album via the drums it's it's great uh, i can listen to it basically on repeat for days on end so check it out in the court of the crimson king by king crimson highly recommend it and i'll see you in the next video click the like and subscribe thank you for watching